Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. John, summoning two of his disciples, sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or must we wait for someone else? When the men reached Jesus, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, are you the one who is to come, or have we to wait for someone else? It was just then that he cured many people of diseases and afflictions and of evil spirits and gave the gift of sight to many who were blind. Then he gave the messengers their answer. Go back and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind see again, the walk, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, the good news is proclaimed to the poor, and happy is the man who does not lose faith in me. The good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Go and tell John what you have seen and what you have heard. Be beloved in Christ, the marriage between words and action is the most convincing proof of our identity, of what we stand for, and it enables others to believe what we preach. So for example, in a court of law, it is the evidence of what is seen and heard that convinces a judge and a jury. It is the values or the values, values are passed on from parents to children through your words and actions. As St. Francis of Assisi, instructed his brothers, he would say to them very often, preach the gospel with words if necessary. So what becomes convincing is that marriage between words and actions. And so in today's scripture readings, today's scripture readings invite us to contemplate the powerful marriage of words and action as two sides of a coin. In the first reading from the prophet of Isaiah, the prophet celebrates the providence of Yahweh not only by the words of Yahweh, but by Yahweh's action in creation and his actions of justice. So we heard in the first reading, the prophet says, speaking on God's behalf, I formed the light and create the darkness. And he goes on to say that only in the Lord are just deeds and power. The prophet's argument is that God becomes known to us as creator and as a God of action, a God of justice, not simply a God of words, but a God of action. In today's gospel reading from John, in responding to John the Baptist's inquiry of of, of Jesus as the expected Messiah, Jesus sends a message to John saying through his messengers, go tell John what you have what? Seen and what you have heard. Because prior to that they had seen Jesus uh, making the blind see again, the lame walk, the lepers heal, the deaf hear, and the, the good news proclaimed to the kingdom of proclaim the kingdom of God. And so, beloved, what is the missionary challenge that today's scripture readings give to us? The message of Jesus Christ becomes convincing when it is proclaimed through words and actions. 
when it is proclaimed in, through words and actions, not in the privacy of our rooms, not in the privacy of our houses, not just in the privacy of this wonderful worship space, but when the message of God is preached through words of actions in the marketplace, at your workplaces, on the streets, in your homes, in the marketplace. That is where we must proclaim the good news through words and actions. So when persons observe us, when persons in the marketplace observe us, when persons in a, at our workplace or on the streets or in our neighborhood observe us, they must, they should, there should be no dichotomy between what we say and what we do. There must be no gap between our words expressed in songs in church and our actions at home or in the marketplace or in business or in politics or wherever we are involved in beloved in Christ. The world will become convinced of the good news of Jesus Christ if you and I can proclaim that Jesus is alive not simply through our words but also our actions. Let us pray beloved in Christ for the grace to keep that marriage alive, the marriage between words and actions. Let us pray for the grace and let us not create a divorce between words and action, but let us keep that marriage faithful, keep it alive and keep it well, for when the world sees the faithfulness of, of the marriage between words and actions, they will become convinced that what we say and what we do is truly the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.